I'm Pragya and I bring to you excerpts from the latest issue of Outlook. One nation, one election, one nation, many people. The issue brings to you diverse debate and points of view on the idea of one nation and one election. In the substrata section of Outlook, Amelia Glazer pays tribute to Ukrainian poet and writer Victoria Amelina, who died recently from wounds inflicted by a Russian missile strike in the East Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk. Amelia is a professor at the University of California. August 22, the Ukrainian writer, activist, and war crime investigator Victoria Amelina posted a poem on Facebook based on her testimony from Mariupol. Strange scorching summer filled with sea people, their memories dismantled into souvenirs. Photographers for German papers, journalists for the Times, prosecutors, investigators, archivists, for future museums of the city, of which only a sea remains, and some sea people, whose memories are collected as souvenirs. The images form a kind of palindrome, investigative reports from the war framed by people's personal memories. Victoria Amelina died on June 1st from wounds inflicted by a Russian missile strike on a restaurant in the East Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk. With Amelina's death, the world lost a fearless, thoughtful individual whose writing probed the limits of memory and belonging. Take this excerpt from one of her novels published in my home university's journal, Alchemy, a year ago. A dog can show you, like on a map, the pulse points and entire spots of pain in this city. The 40s lie at the shallow level and a bit deeper, the events of World War I. There are no names, no nationalities or class affiliations that can be read. Instead, you have to ascribe traces of vague human words on this vivid map. They must be collected like breadcrumbs from a few tour guides, chatty neighbors and popular radio broadcasts. Dom's Dream Kingdom, translated by Grace Mahoney, is told from the perspective of a dog whose sharp sense of smell gives him unique access into city's history. For Dom, centuries are laid namelessly one atop another, and cultures are interwoven, bounded by their belonging to a common space. Born in Lviv to a Russian-speaking family, Amelina briefly lived in Canada as a teenager before returning to her native Ukraine. She studied computer science and worked in IT, shifting to writing full-time when her first novel, The Autumn Syndrome, a book about the 2014 revolution of dignity was published in 2015. Her 2017 novel, Dom's Dream Kingdom, was awarded the European Union's Prize for Literature and was shortlisted for Lit Axon Book Prize. It is about a family in Lviv with a Soviet pedigree who live in the home of the Polish-Jewish sci-fi writer, Stanislav Lem. Amelina also wrote children's fiction and poetry. She was awarded the Joseph Conrad Literary Award in 2017. On the eve of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia began bombing cities in Donbas. Amelina posted on her Facebook page, Kramatorsk, what's happening with you? She was traveling abroad and was slated to fly home on February 24, 22. I feel so bad I'm not with you right now, she posted from the airport. She had learned that Ukraine had closed its airspace. Forgive me, I'll try to be useful. The next day, she posted a long message in English asking citizens of the world to protest. Evil never stops. We must stop it. So please do not give me shelter. Give me your hand. As millions of displaced Ukrainians fled across the border to Poland, Amelina crossed the border back into Ukraine. That spring, she began documenting war crimes for human rights organization, Truth Hounds, traveling through Ukraine's newly deoccupied territories to investigate the violence carried out against Ukrainian citizens. Among her contributions was the recovery of a diary left by writer and activist Vakulenko, whom Russian troops had abducted and killed near the city of Izum in the first months of the full-scale war. Vakulenko had buried the diary under a cherry tree, telling his father to give it to our side when the city was liberated. For these and more, read the current issue of Outlook.